Mike, in a previous interview, you and I talked about the fundamentals of AHARS, this wonderful little technology that's in the cockpits of most leading GA and, of course, much larger airplanes these days. The fact that, you know, everybody knows the word AHARS, so to speak, and, yeah, they can spell it. But the fact of the matter is they don't know much about the technology. But one of the most fascinating things we're finding at AEA 2009 is how that technology is being repackaged. And in this case, with Crossbow, AHARS on a card. That's correct. This is a, a card level product. It's our uh, first card level product. And as you can see, it's actually very small. It actually will, will fit in my pocket here. It's going to be the smallest and most accurate AHARS card we've ever produced. The AHARS in general at this point have come to a size uh, that's so small that we really feel there's an advantage to that size. And traditionally, you know, the, the AHARS is located in a large box, mounted on the back of the aircraft. It's, you know, five pounds and there's 30 feet of wiring included to, to hook it up. It's to a size now where we think we can take this card and we can implement it directly into the glass panel display itself eliminate that box, eliminate that weight, and eliminate all the wiring and installation costs associated with it. And all the potential failure points. And all the potential failure points as well, correct. Because the AHARS issues I've, been, uh, I've seen in, in my career have never been with the AHARS. It's always been what the AHARS was hooked up to or how it was hooked up. That's correct. Yes, this, uh, this product in particular is going to be the least expensive and most accurate we've produced. We think due to its price and size, we're really going to be able to, to infiltrate a lot of markets. It's really going to help the glass panel manufacturers bring that cost down, which is really what the GA pilot wants. Now, do you sacrifice uh, in any way any capability, sensitivities, or uh, overall abilities of it by going to such a small form factor? No, it, the technology has really improved so much that we're actually getting better performance than we did traditionally in a box factor. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, with its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. We're looking for a $4,000 price range for this, which is very, very inexpensive. will definitely be the least expensive Level A card, and uh, going to be the first uh, Level A card of this size certified. And when you talk level A, explain to our audience what level A means. Sure, there's, there's three levels of software cert. There's level C, level B, and level A. Traditionally, we start off in level C, which is typically part 23 aircraft. Level A is the highest, uh, highest level of software certification. Very, very difficult to do, but very robust. And we believe level A is really where the future's at. So this product will really be certified for BizJet level and higher. So in other words, start with the top. Start with the top, go for the best performance possible. Where might we see initial uh, installations or applications? Uh, we had talked in a previous interview about being able to put these in all the support devices that in the past relied on outside information like autopilots, which relied on outside attitude information. Now, uh, obviously, the, the sky is the limit, or in this case, the sky is no limit. That's correct. Uh, we have a couple OEMs already that are uh, going to integrate this product into their, their glass panel displays or similar products. I expect to see those uh, press releases in the next couple months here we're really going to see a much lower cost in the glass panel displays themselves and much better performance. I would imagine the certification standards for these have to be absolutely brutal. Software predominantly is the, the most difficult part, uh, but there's definitely some, some hardware and mechanical testing associated as well. If you can, talk about some of the hazards that uh, might, uh, these things might be subject to and the kind of testing, uh, especially from the uh, hardware standpoint, that these things uh, take on. Yeah, we're, uh, we're definitely very familiar with that. We've done a lot of box level products that require lightning strike. Um, lightning strike is a very difficult test to, to uh, overcome. There's also EMI, temperature. You, know, you, you can get down to temperatures of minus 55 or lower. Uh, it's a very difficult environment to operate in, but we've been doing this for quite a while now. We've we really um, learned how to do that appropriately and, and get through those testing. Now, are these devices hardened in any way against uh, outside interference, especially electromagnetic? Yes, the, the box level products are particularly hardened against that kind of interference. Uh, EMI and Lightning in particular. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. How do you test for something like that? They're actually, uh, actually testing methods in the DO-160 uh, regs that'll, that'll tell you what, um, what tests you have to pass and at what levels. You know, most of them are pretty standardized across the, the board. 
for helicopter vibe, those are a little different. They have a particular curve just for helicopter when you're doing vibration testing. The helicopter vibe in particular is very, very difficult. Uh, that's probably the most challenging uh, vibration environment for us. Uh, we've successfully passed that in, uh, in previous generations of products, and we're going to pass it in this product as well. But it's very, very challenging. It's a very difficult uh, curve to, uh, to get through. And the AHC 525, if you can, uh, specs, weight, capabilities? Sure, it's going to be a level A product. We're looking at a half degree of attitude accuracy in roll and pitch, uh, one half degrees of accuracy in heading. And right now we're less than two and a quarter watts in power and less than a half a pound. Uh, rough sizing is four and a quarter inches by two and a quarter by one. So that's uh, just around 11 cubic inches. And to be found in uh, the pockets of Crossbow Technology employees everywhere. Yes, pockets of Crossbow Technology everywhere. There you go. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you very much.